<laughs> oh. Hi guys, it's your build wizard down here at Vapor93. I just wanted to let you guys know that I was feeling a little under the weather for the past few days and I was not able to record a video or a review for you guys, but I had a featured guest come on and do some battery testing for us. It's a good friend of mine and a battery expert, so stay tuned and see what he has to say. I'm a wizard, wizard, a wizard, wizard, a wizard man! I'm a wizard, wizard, a wizard, wizard, a wizard man! I'll build your brains! A wizard, wizard, wizard man am I! Been rolling, so we're ready to go. <laughs> All right. Hey guys, it's Gavin over here at Vapor93. I'm in today to talk about a little bit of battery safety and also doing some tests of internal resistance on some of the batteries that I carry here. And this is Bryson, my three year old son. He's here hanging out with us today as well. Uh, I'm in today to talk about battery safety and also some internal resistance test results that we just finished up for today. So we'll go ahead and start out with what internal resistance is and how it applies to your batteries and vaping. <laughs> what internal resistance is, is the resistance of the electrons passing through your battery. And how that applies to vaping is broken down to the lower the internal resistance, the higher amperage your battery can put out safely and the higher the internal resistance, the opposite, the lower amperage that's able to produce at a safe level. And how this applies to vaping basically means if you're building you know, 0.1, 0.2 coils, low sub-ohms, you need to have a battery with low internal resistance. If you're using a battery with higher internal resistance and building low ohm coils, you're gonna be burning up your batteries quicker than you normally would. It's not gonna be performing the way you're expecting it and with lithium ion, there is a potential for your battery to internally short out, get hot, and maybe even combust inside your mod. It is important to know what battery you are using and also the resistance of the coil you are using to be able to get the best possible vape in a safe <coughs> manner. So today we went ahead and tested four 18650s and two 26650s and we have some results on that for you. So what we're using to test the internal resistance of the batteries today is what I usually use for my RC helicopter batteries. We're using an E-Fuel e 1200 watt 60 amp power supply that converts our wall electricity into 24 volt DC. The actual charger that we're using is a Hyperion 1420i Net3 charger that is used to charge, discharge, balance, and measure the internal resistance of the cells of any lithium ion, lithium polymer cell. This equipment is definitely overkill if you're looking to just charge and discharge your LiPo batteries. But for what we were using it today to measure the re internal resistance it is the most accurate equipment that there probably is available for us to do so with. So basically the way that we test the internal resistance of these is we connect a battery with a positive and a negative lead on and turn the charger to lithium ion however many milliamps it is and we tested it on a charge and a discharge cycle and while we do that we plug it in put it on charge and scroll to our internal resistance screen and what that is doing is measuring the amount of electricity that's sent through the charge cable, through the battery, and then comes back out through the negative, and it's showing us how, how much resistance is in your battery, which is loss of uh, electricity, loss of amperage, power. So first up, we're gonna go ahead and test an EFEST 2000 milliamp lithium ion battery. This battery is rated at a 10 amp discharge. Let's see what the internal resistance is. So here we are going ahead and connecting our circuit by hooking our positive lead to the positive pin on the battery. We're hooking our negative lead to the negative post on the battery as well. So at a 1C discharge rate at 2 amps, we are measuring an internal resistance of 67 milliamp. That is pretty high for a mechanical mod or sub-ohm build but it's perfectly acceptable for a tank or any 
higher resistance builds. So next we have an MXJO 3.7 volt 2500 milliamp and it's rated at a 35 amp discharge rate. Let's go ahead and check the resistance. It's doing the same thing, connecting the positive to the positive pin, negative to the negative. This battery is performing about twice as well as the 10 amp EFEST. It's showing an internal resistance of right around 31. This battery would be suitable for all kinds of builds from sub-ohm coils to higher ohm tanks and such. The larger capacity will give it longer run time at a lower discharge rate and the high amperage output it's able to produce will give it the large clouds, um, heavy hitting stuff at a, long, at a shorter run, run time. So next up we have an EFEST 18650 2100 milliamp rated at 30 amp discharge rate. This battery is reading a 23 milliohms of internal resistance, which is slightly better than the MXJO. So again, it will be suitable for any type of build, but with the slightly lower milliamp capacity, it's probably more geared towards making large clouds running your battery out a little bit quicker. It will also last a decent amount of time in a higher resistance tank build as well. <laughs> so to finish our lineup of the 18650 battery internal resistance testing, we have an MRIN 2600 milliamp that is rated at a 38 amp discharge rate. So for our final battery, the Imrin 2600 milliamp, it actually has the lowest internal resistance of all of them. It comes in at 19 overall. With the high capacity and the high amperage uh, discharge rate, this will be a great battery that will be useful in any and every kind of build. The large milliamp capacity will give you longer run times in whatever build you decide to use it in. The high amperage discharge rate is going to be able to produce a little bit more watts, amps, better, be better and bigger clouds than any of the previous batteries we tested. Next we're going to move on to the 26650s. This is an MNKE 26650 3500 milliamp lithium ion. Our MNKE 26650 3500 milliamp comes in at about 38 internal resistance. That's going to be suitable for your tanks, drippers, or whatever else you want to use it in. The high milliamp capacity is going to give you a longer run time in whatever you choose to use it in. So our second and final 26650 is the MXJO 3500 milliamp. 35 amp discharge rated battery. This battery comes in at 20 internal resistance. So basically what that means is that this battery will be suitable for even lower ohm builds and with the high 3500 milliamp capacity will give you the longer run times in your tanks or whatever you choose to put it in as well. So there are some variations between uh, the batteries and the testing that we've done. First off, different batches of batteries can have different internal resistances with different um, continuous amp draws on them. 
It's not an exact perfect science such as cutting a board two by four inches. It will be two by four inches every time. With these, there is an actual chemistry that has to go on when they are made and the life in the discharge amperage of the battery is affected by its whole entire life from being made to making it to you and into your mod. Yeah. Daddy! Yes, Bri. Okay, we're going to go to the park in a couple minutes. Okay. So going into battery safety, out of all the batteries we tested, this is the only one that I would not recommend putting in sub-ohm builds or any other very high drain situation. If you were to put this battery in a very low sub-ohm build that was pulling more amps than this thing is able to give, there is a chance that it can heat up, start leaking, and even possibly catch fire. However, it is more unlikely with a lithium ion versus a lithium polymer. It can and has happened before. I have done it for fun once. <laughs> with this battery very similar to this, towards the end of its life, I wanted to actually check how safe the lithium ion ions are compared to the lithium polymers. Granted, it was a lot harder to get this thing to start leaking and even show any smoke. I was able to do it by continuously connecting the positive and negative circuits on it, which basically would explode a lithium battery. And it heated up to the point where I could not touch it. It started smoking and you could smell the gases coming out of it. So you want to be very careful and know what battery you are sticking in what device and what you are asking that battery to do and also if that battery is capable of producing what you want it to do. So in conclusion of our battery testing, the two batteries that stand out is the Imrin 18650 and our MXJO 26650. The reason that I chose these batteries as a great all-around battery from sub-ohm builds to tanks or whatever else you want to use it for is the high milliamp capacity of both of them and the low internal resistance with a high amp discharge rate. What that basically means is that these batteries are suitable to put in any device at almost any resistance and with their high milliamp capacity they're going to give you the longer run time out of anything we tested. So that concludes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Our next video, we will actually be testing the continuous amp draw and the peak two second amp draw of the batteries. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye. Say bye bye. I'm a candy daddy. Okay. Let's go get candy. Let's go get candy.